us with. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap on this evening? I thank God for what he has done to this beautiful place that is going to be dedicated back to the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord and we want to make sure on tonight that we dedicate this place that is designed and set aside um, to worship the Lord on this evening. Um, I'm just excited on tonight just for this moment. God is doing something great in this season in our lives here at Sick Ministries. And it's, I'm humbled and honored to be in this position. I'm humbled and honored even for those who serve here and those who assist and help um, in this ministry. God has been doing a great work in us and through us. And so I'm just thankful and grateful on this evening. We're not going to belong the time, but at this time we're going to have Evangelist Deborah. She's going to come with scripture reading and prayer and following that Lady Burnett and Pastor Sonny will lead us in worship on this evening. Amen, amen. amen. that light 
but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And with that scripture, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be pleased to inhabit this place and that your glory will shine here now for innumerable generations to come and forevermore. Hallelujah. And in everything that we do, may we exemplify the love of Christ and may his love, favor, anointing, and grace be at the center of all that happens in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why are you turned into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. No one like you, none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Hallelujah! Yeah. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is great.
this, Father God. We love you and we thank you, God, for bringing us here. And because you are great, I am great. And I'm able to be great in you, God. And I thank you. Pour out our praise. 
praise to you. No matter how heavy we are, Jesus, we pour out our praise to you.
make a way for you today. He sure made a way for me.
and sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing that. And I stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. Thank you. 
for you. And no matter what you're going through, you are here. He's gonna fix it even in the midnight hour when you cry. Yes, God got you. He got you. His arms are around you. Comfort, that's the comfort of God. When you thought you were alone, that was the comfort of God. Hallelujah. 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 When you didn't have nobody, yes. God was that friend. He was there. Hallelujah. When I felt alone, He was there. He said He will never leave and forsake us. Hallelujah. And that's why I serve the God I serve. And I will never turn my back on Him. No matter what I go through. here at SIG Ministries and I'm just excited what God is doing. You don't understand, I was just in a whole different world because my wife was just speaking prophetically. She was just, I mean, you you just see a total change. And and for me, my wife being so timid and now she's just flowing. God is doing something new in this season. God was telling me all day long, he said, son, in this season, I'm going to move suddenly. Suddenly. When you least expect it, God said, I'm going to move. All you got to do is keep worshiping him and watch how God moves. He said, suddenly, miracle signs and wonders, suddenly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not going to be long on this evening. I thank you for taking this time out. If we can turn to 1 Kings 
uh, the ninth chapter. I will begin to read in verse 2. 1 Kings uh, ninth chapter, um, starting with verse 2. I'll probably read verses 2 through 5 for context. Thank God for everybody that is here. Amen. I pray that you are praying with me and for me. This has been a very, very busy week. And I was like, Lord, I need some more of your oil. Yes. Yes. And he gave it. Yes. <laughs> and I just kept hearing the Lord say, he says, son, I'm with you. If God doesn't say anything else, he always says, son, I am with you. Just go. Here it is, 1 Kings, the ninth chapter, verse 2 says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time. And as he had appeared to him in Gibeon, the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayers and supplications which you have made before me. I have consecrated this house which you built by putting my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. He says, if you walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart and uprightness so that you are obedient to do all that I have commanded you and will keep my statutes and my commandments, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever, just as I promised to your father David, saying, you shall not fail to have any man a man upon the throne of Israel. Father in heaven, we just come to you right now. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to speak to your children. Father God, they belong to you, Father God, and they are here to hear from you, Father God, and even see you, Father God, for you said the pure in heart shall see you, Father God. So I pray that they hear and see you, Father God, as you speak on this evening, Father God. I'm just a vessel that desires to be used by you, Father God, but you desire us to hear from you, Father God. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If I was to put a title to this, we dedicate this place to you. Okay. Amen. Here in 1 Kings, the ninth chapter, verse 2, it says that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time. And this really ministered to me because whenever God shows up, whenever God appears, on your behalf, whenever he comes to visit you, things begin to change and things become aligned in your life. Yes. We should learn how to worship God to a place where we can feel his presence, Amen. to experience his glory. We have to get back to pressing in yes. when we get when it comes to worshiping God. See, we, we want to just press in a little bit and yes. just get a little tingly feeling. But God is saying, I'm calling those that I visit as he visits Solomon here, when he visits you, God says, I want you to enter in even deeper. Yes. God is calling us to a deeper level of intimacy, but it's said that he visited him a second time. And so before we really get into the second time, we have to go back to the beginning of this. And, and if you can turn to me uh, in Second uh, Samuel, the seventh chapter, um, this is uh, the prophet Nathan. Um, he is speaking, Second Samuel, the seventh chapter. I'm going to read verses 12 through about 15. Um, but what happens here in this text that um, the prophet Nathan um, is speaking to David concerning the vision that God has given him. And so it says here in 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, verse 12, he says, when, and this is what he says, he said, when your days are completed and you lie down with your fathers, he says, I will raise up another after you, an offspring of your body, and I will establish his rule. He says, he will build a house for my name, and I will establish it, his royal throne forever. So what we're experiencing here is that we know David. David wanted to build God a temple. And because he was a man of war, and he had blood on his hands, the Lord told him, he says, you will not build me a temple, but your offspring, yeah. one coming after you, yeah. will. And this is what the scripture is 
uh, referring to here that he's referring to Solomon coming after him that he says Solomon will yet build that temple but it was something in verse 13 that really ministered to me he says he will build a house for my name and I will establish his royal throne forever and and when you think about David he was telling he was telling David that your kingdom will be established forever that it will be ongoing and, I, and I'm reminded of Jesus as as when he fulfilled his assignment in the earth, right, yeah. right. he had reestablished what was established in heaven. Yeah, he reestablished right. in the earth, right. and he fulfilled the scripture because his kingdom, David, the, the, the kingdom that uh, that Nathan said he would be established forever, was established through Jesus Christ. Right. So when Jesus resurrected with all power and authority, yeah. now that we believe in him by faith, we yeah. are part of this royal kingdom. Yes. Right. It's established forever because of Jesus. Yes. If Jesus did not do what he did on the cross, we would not be in royalty. Yes. We would not who we, we we would not know who we are. And so he tells uh, uh, Nathan, the prophet tells David this to comfort his heart. He tells him that his kingdom would be established forever. Amen. But if we can go to First King now, six and eleven, this is going to make sense in a few minutes here. Because our text on today said that the Lord visited him a second time. Amen. And so when we go to 1 Kings 6 and the 11th, uh, 6th chapter, verse 11, this was the first time that the Lord visited Solomon. And he tells him here in 1 Kings 6, chapter, verse 11, he says, Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning the house which you are building, he says, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all of my commandments and walk in them, then I will carry out my word with you, which I spoke to David, your father. Praise so what God. we're seeing here is that he's, he, the, 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 God is telling Solomon, if you want to see the blessings and the promises of God that I have for you, that I had on David, you're going to have to obey me. You're going to have to trust in me. You're going to have to be obedient to my word. See, a lot of us got our hands out during prayer, but we never have our hands up. What am I saying? That we always come to prayer, always asking God this, asking God that. And the Bible says he already knows what you have need of for you ask. So all you got to learn how to do is get into a place of worship and keep worshiping him because he already knows what you need. God is going to bring it to pass, but we have to get to the place of worshiping him and praying and seeking his face. Because he's telling him here, the only way you're going to receive the promises and the blessings and the inheritance, you're going to have to obey. Yes. We're living in a time that people don't want to trust nor obey the word of God. Yes. We have, we're living in a time they don't believe in the word of God. And we that say that we love God, we that say that we are born of God, we have to obey and trust God to receive the blessings and the promises that's on our life. Amen. This is the only way you're going to receive your inheritance. You have to walk in obedience. Your lifestyle should be a reflection of Christ in obedience. Yes. But we transition here to our text. I told you I'm not going to be long. I shouldn't have to preach long. You should have spent time with God before you got here. But it tells us here that the Lord appeared to Solomon a second time. And sometimes the, the first visitation is an awe experience. But the second visitation whew, is even a greater experience. Amen. That you can worship God, that God will incline his ear to your worship. Yes. That you can uh, worship God and he can sit right next to you as you're yes. calling oh, upon yes. his name. Yes. The Bible says that he is omnipresent. Yes. And so he can be in all of our worship experiences yes. at once. Yes. And so he says here that the Lord appeared to Samuel, Solomon a second time. Hallelujah. And as as he appeared to him in Gibeon, we just read that, and the Lord said to him, I have heard your prayers and your supplication. Some of you have been praying and seeking the face of God, and you feel that God has not heard your prayers. Uh -huh. But the Bible says the prayer of the righteous man availeth much. So that means the minute that you accepted Christ, you became righteousness. You went from filthy rags to righteousness. And when we seek God, which is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, when we seek him, he hears our prayers. Why? Because we're in right standing. Because we're in one with him. We were once enemies of Christ. But now that we're in Christ, we're now one with him. And he hears our prayers. Don't ever think. 
That when you're praying and seeking the face of God, that he doesn't hear your prayers. Amen. Amen. The enemy wants to discourage you to make you think that God didn't hear it. But you have to pray and believe. As Lady Burnett was saying, you've got to believe without a shout of a doubt that God has heard your prayers. I'm believing it. I'm going to walk in it. I'm going to live it out because I believe God. Sometimes you got to tell your situation that I believe God. Yes. Start telling your bills that you got to pay that I believe God. I don't see the money in the account, but I believe God is going to work something out on my behalf. I'm not talking about magical money popping in your account. I believe God can touch somebody's heart. Yes. Yes. That they will bless you to pay your bill. Yes. I just believe God. I know God will work it out. You just got to believe God. You got to trust God. Right. That's right. But it tells us, he says, I've heard your prayers and your supplication. I don't know who that's for on, on tonight. Somebody's been praying in here. I'm not trying to be prophetic at the moment, but somebody's been praying. And you wonder, the God, did you hear my prayer? But he told Solomon, I've heard your prayers and your supplications, yes. which you made before me. Amen. Yes. I saw you <laughs> when you was praying. I saw your tears when you were on your knees praying. His Lord says, I saw, I saw you, I saw you. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord is everywhere, beholding good and evil. So the Lord sees you. Not only does he hear your prayers, he sees you when you pray because you are the apple of his eye. Hallelujah. But it says here, he says, I've heard your prayers and supplication which you have made before me. He says, I have what? Consecrated this house. I have sanctified yes. this house. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. I was reading, and I, and I can't remember what chapter, but it might be a, within these chapters, how Solomon goes in the temple and he begins to pray. He seeks the face of the Lord, and then after he leaves, God shows up. The presence of the Lord was in the house after he prayed. Yeah. And I'm just believing there's some areas in your house that you just need to pray and leave. Yeah. So when you enter in, you just experience what the yeah. presence of God. There's some areas in your house you just need to consecrate unto the Lord. Because when you want to enter into that place where the presence of the Lord is. And so he said here, I've consecrated. This is the same thing that happened to us. You know, we are the house of God. Amen. And when we accepted Christ, we, he sanctified us. He set Amen. us aside for what? Holy use. And this place is now being dedicated back to the Lord. Amen. A place of worship, a place of reverence. Amen. See, the house of God is a place where you're supposed to experience the house of God. And we, what we're experiencing now is the latter glory. What we're experiencing here was the former glory. Because the presence of God was in the house. But he said, there's a ladder glory. Yeah. So now we can bring the glory in the house of God. There, there, there should never be a service that should be dead and dull. And you got Christ on the inside. You should be able to step in the place. Yes. And shift the atmosphere. Yes. How you got Christ on the inside and the atmosphere ain't shifted. Yes. That means you haven't been praying. That means you haven't been seeking the face of God. When you pray and seek the face of God, when I step in Walmart, Walmart shifts. Yes. Everything begins to shift. Yes. Because of who within me. Yes. But when you don't know who you are, you'll step in Walmart and it will look the same. That's good. Not in this season. He says, "Latter glory." Yes. We're supposed to be walking in the glory of God. How is it that Enoch walked with God? Good Why can't you walk with God? Why can't you walk with him? Enoch, all he did was bask in the presence of God. There should be a time throughout your day that you said, "Lord, I'm set, I'm setting this side this time aside just to spend time with you." We talk about we're watchmen and we're sleeping at the hour that we're supposed to be praying. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God wakes me up 12, 1, 2. My wife's sleeping, but I'm up praying. Why? Because yes. that's my watch hour. Yes. Yes. Witches and warlocks and all this demonic yes. stuff going on between 12 and 4. And you yes. up there asleep. God says, wake up and pray. Yes. Jesus said, could you not pray just for an hour? Yes. Can't you wake up and just pray from 12 to 1? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Let me get out of here. I don't want to take too much more of your time. But he says, I consecrated the house which you built by putting my name 
Therefore, so guess what? There can't be no other name but the name of Jesus in this place. Come on. Buddha can't flow in this place. Confucius can't flow in this place. It has to be the name of Jesus. That's right. No other name. No other name. Thank you. See, see, the enemy works in signs and wonders, but God works in miracle signs and wonders. There's a difference. See, if you have the Holy Ghost, you'll be able to discern, is this a miracle? Yeah. The enemy can't perform miracles, but he can perform signs and wonders. Yes. All right. And if you're not in Christ, you'll be deceived. Let me keep going. Yeah. It says, and, and built by putting my name there forever. See, my wife made a vow. She don't even, That's what dedication is. She devoted herself on tonight. She made a vow on tonight. She said, God, I'm, I'm going to live for you. Yeah. She made a vow. What's your vow on tonight? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you rededicating yourself, your commitment to the Lord? There's nothing wrong with rededicating yourself Amen. to your assignment and to your purpose. That's right. That's right. The traditional church will say, oh, you, you must have sin in your life. You ain't got no sin in your life. I'm rededicating my life because I want to be more committed to God. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm sorry. But it says here, if you walk before me as your father David, David had set the pace. David was a man of God's own heart. I know he had sin in his life, but David didn't run. David said, Lord, I have sinned, and only I have sinned before thee. I'm the one that has sinned. He was a man of integrity. He had the heart of God. And he's telling him here, he says, if you walk before me as your father David walked in integrity of heart and uprightness. He says, so that you are obedient to do all the things I have commanded you and, I, and will keep my statutes and my judgment. Then, that then is huge. Yeah. Then, yeah. Ooh, Jesus, that then, then, is, that, that then, then is huge because then you will reap the promises. Then you will get your inheritance. Yeah. Then yeah. you will be healed. The Bible says they were healed as they went. Right. If they didn't keep going, they wouldn't yes. experience the healing. Yeah. And so you have to understand that when you obey God, then you're going to be blessed. Yes. Then overflow. Yeah. It's going to happen in your life. Yes, sir. Then. Glory. Yes. Then we'll keep my statutes. Then I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever. Just as I promised, God keeps his promises. Amen. All the time. In your secret time, God has been promising you some things. God is going to keep his promise. He is a keeper of his word. And in my prayer time, I remind God what he said. Lord, you told me this. I was shown up, no, this is you speaking. I'm confident this was you, Lord. That whatever promises and blessings you have for me, I want to receive, but you got to be obedient. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He says, then I will establish my throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever, just as I promised your father David, saying, you shall not fail to have any man upon the throne of Israel. This was God's plan for Solomon. But Solomon had to surrender to God. I think I said at, during empowerment service, surrendering is not hands up, it's really hands out. Amen. Um, in this season, God wants that stuff that you don't want to let go of. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I use that example of your car get repossessed. You know, you got to hand over the keys. And what is it in this season that you're holding on to that God says it's time for you to hand it over? You want to see a miracle in your life, just hand over the struggle. Hand it over. Hand over fear. Hand over doubt. Hand over anxiety. Whatever it is, begin to hand it over. Even right now as I'm ministering, begin to hand it over. You have some situations you're praying and trusting God for. God says, it wasn't for you to fix the situation. I wanted you to hand it over to me. When are you going to start trusting God? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Yes, God. Father God, and pray with me as I pray. Glory. Father God, we are here on this evening, Father God, to dedicate this place that you have given us, Father God. 
Your word says, earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. They and they that dwell therein, Father God. Everything belongs to you, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for this place that you have given us, Father God. And we give it back to you, Father God. Even the ministry, Father God, belongs to you, Father God. And we give you the ministry. We give you this place, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. That we will follow your agenda. We'll follow your plan. We'll follow the path, Father God, that you have for us, Father God. You allowed us to have this space for a time and for a season, Father God. And Father God, we are willing, Father God, on tonight to obey your plan for this ministry and whatever you desire to do in this place, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father God, we give it to you, Father God. We give it to you as freely as you've given it to us, Father God. Father God, we freely give it to you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. In these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask those leaders to come at this time. God says you're more than just a minstrel. Oh, Hallelujah. Your prophetic dreams. Thank you, Jesus. God is speaking to you concerning times that you're coming into. Oh, That's why you're prophetic in this season because of the call. God is getting ready to speak to you prophetically, the prophetic anointing on your life. That's why Satan has been fighting you for years because of the he didn't want you to release the prophetic utterance that's in your belly. But God says you shall go forth in this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Father God, open his eyes. You said suddenly, Father God. Open the eyes. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If God is pressing upon your heart to connect, to be a part of this ministry, we don't promote membership, we promote fellowship. But I want to pray with you. Thank you. 
I'm just following the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you before I pray for these leaders. Mm -hmm. That if, if God is pressing upon your heart, you're here tonight mm -hmm. because you need a place of fellowship. You're here tonight because there's a call and anointing on your life. God says, come now. I'm going to give you time. Come now. Hallelujah. We want to pray with you. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God says the time is now. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? But Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was broken, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Touch right now. Allow him to experience your glory right now. Come into his heart right now. Right now, the name of Jesus. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows to trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life was born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. Yeah. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open.
scriptures at this time if everyone could stand and this will be interactive and as I read when I'm finished reading if everyone would say we dedicate this building Amen. Hallelujah. brethren sisters and friends we have assembled to dedicate this building to God as a place to be used for the sake of the gospel as a place dedicated to the service of God and his eternal kingdom to the glory of God our Father, to the honor of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God and our Lord and Savior, to the praise of the Holy Spirit, source of life and light. And if everyone would say, we, we dedicate this building. The building and the people in it shall be dedicated to the service of the Lord. They shall live lives worthy of the gospel to which they are called. And for everyone, we, we dedicate, dedicate this building. For missionary endeavor at home and abroad, for worldwide evangelism and education, till all the kingdoms of the world become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. Yeah. For the reform of social wrongs, till all human society is transformed Hallelujah. to the power of the gospel. We dedicate, we dedicate this building. In grateful remembrance of all who have loved and served the kingdom, with hearts tender for those who have departed from this earthly habitation, a free will offering of thanksgiving and praise. We dedicate this building. And to the pastor and first lady, do you now give this building to God to be used for the worship of God and for the upbuilding of his kingdom among men? Yes. And would you repeat after me, we do? We do. In all sincerity, in all sincerity. With, love for God, with love for God, and faith, and faith. 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And to this congregation, do you now receive this building to God to be used for the worship of God and for the upbuilding of his kingdom among men? And if you will repeat after me, we do. We do. In all sincerity. In all sincerity. With love for God. With love for God. And faith. And faith. In the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Our pastor and first lady are in the stead of God for us. They are our shepherd. We are the sheep. They are our watch keepers over our souls. Amen. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he has bought with his own blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And at this time, before we do our benediction, if we can have the church, whoever wants to, if you could come and stand and everyone, we're going to pray for our pastor and our first lady that the Lord would cover them yes, yes. and protect them and be with them because they're watching over us but there's dangers out there that they're trying to keep us from right and so we have to keep them that's right father god we beseech you to look upon this place Look upon this man and woman of God that you put in this place. You placed them here, Lord Jesus. You placed them here as shepherds and under shepherds. You placed them here to take care of his flock, to bless this flock, to bring forth the word of God to this place and those places around this place. God bless them in their walking, their to and fro. Bless the congregation that's present tonight, O oh Lord. Bless their presence. They may fulfill the word of God in their deeds and actions. Continue to bless this house Hallelujah. and all that comes forth. Bless this ministry yep, as you would have it so, Lord. Bless the very souls from the oldest to the youngest that are in your presence right now. And for those who are watching, we bless you as well. Yes. And God, we ask you to keep us. Yes. To keep us. Yes. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Before we, just a few brief announcements. This coming Sunday, we will have ordination service for um, Elder Mike and for evangelist um, elect, as well as Elder Mike elect as well. Um, Pastor Mike has been ordained, but he wants to be, as they would say, a son of the house. And so we will be ordaining Pastor Mike and then evangelist um, Angie will be ordained as well this coming Sunday. So I'm excited for them to Amen. We will have light refreshments, so if you have time, feel free to fellowship with us. If you desire to give something on tonight, um, please feel free to give. I'm asking on tonight that if you can sow a seed of $25 on tonight, if you can't give your very best seed, um, the Lord has still blessed that seed, and he wants your heart to be right in what you're giving on tonight. But if you can Please sow a seed of $25 if you can. That's what the Lord pressed upon my heart. And as the lead servant, I've started it by giving it on tonight. Only if you can. If you can't, don't feel pressure. Don't feel bad. We just thank God for everybody here on tonight. Thank God for Dad and Mom Merrill for them taking time out of their busy schedule. Yes, sir. They could be in so many different places, but we thank God for them. They've been ministering to my wife and I and, and counseling us. Amen. And I was just reminiscing on that, like, wow, you know, what God is doing. Yes. And it's the manifestations of it. It's, it's like it's happening. Amen. Um, so we thank God for them. Thank God. Thank you. Um, them being in our lives. Amen. I would never would have knew. He was coaching me in midnight basketball. Back, <laughs> and then years later, we're still connected like this. He believed in me then. Because he drafted me first round. Matter of fact, Rich was at the church. He was at the church at the time. And first, pick. Is, first pick. Yes, first pick. <laughs> My name was in the paper, first pick. Right. So I'll never forget that. So. But yeah, I thank God. Love you all. Thank God for 
Pastor Hernan and his lovely wife, Pastor. Um, this is the connection in this season. It's just yes. an honor and a privilege to, to fellowship with you all, and I thank you just for supporting yes. and being here our past few services. And yes. We're looking in a couple of weeks, I believe, to, to fellowship some more, so I'm, I'm excited what God is calling us to do in this season. Amen? Amen. 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 If nothing else, if I'm not missing anything, let us stand and then Men's Fellowship next Saturday at this location. 11 o'clock. Amen. Uh, Kiki, Kiki texted me. She said um, we can use prayer. Okay. Let's, let's pray right now. Father God, we just pray, Father God, for Kiki, Lord God. Um, we thank you, Lord God, for his wife uh, standing in his stead, Father God. Whatever he's experiencing and dealing with, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that you're touching right now, Father God. Whatever he's dealing with in his mind, Father God. We pray that you touch his mind, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that you protect him on the road in the name of Jesus. Whatever the temptations are, Father God, that he will not fall into the diverse temptations, Father God. But you will, Lord God, order his steps, Father God. I see the enemy pulling on him to do some things, and I pray right now, Father Father God, that you strengthen him in this spirit, Father God, and allow him not, Lord God, to go into those things that he's being tempted of, Father God. I pray, Father God, that he begins to start praying and seeking your face, Lord God. I'm praying for a closer relationship as he's driving on the road. I pray that he begins to call upon your name, Father God. I pray this is a time of intimacy as he's driving, Father God. This is not a time just to be wasting, but this is a time of drawing closer to you, Father God. A time of just seeking your face, Father God. A time for just having a closer relationship and knowing who you are, Father God. And so I'm praying, Father God, for a relationship shift, Father God, right now. Yes, God. He need a shift in his relationship oh, with God. you, Father God. And I'm praying, Father God, that you touch him right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank God for everybody that is here, Father God. Everybody that fellowship and supported, Father God, from different ministries, Father God. But we pray right now, Father God, as they go their separate ways, Father God, that you keep your hand upon them. The angels that are yet assigned to their life, Father God, will help them to get home safe, Father God. Protect their windows and the doors of the cars. Protect the windows and the doors of their homes in the name of Jesus. And as you sent an angel, Father God, to minister to Jesus after he was tempted, yes. Father God. I pray, Father God, that you send that angel yet to minister to yes. us. Yes. Not just in our time of need, just to minister to us and to pour into us, Father Glory. God. Yes. That we know that you sent the angel, Glory Father God. God. Mm. Glory to God. That's it right there. And we pray, Father God, that you bless, Amen. Lord God, the refreshments, bless the hands that prepared it, yes. allow it to, to be nourishing to our body in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 If everyone would just just, um, we're going to disturb everybody. Um, Lauren, are you, how do you want to, because it's kind of tight in the kitchen. Do you want to serve everybody? No. Yes. I can do that. I can do that. Um, okay. 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 Oh, you know, we've been praying. Thank you so much. Thank you. Get back. You right here. You know, I'm saying, Okay. All right, I'm coming. Let me cross section of heaven and earth for God. Uh, in his path, that the Spirit of God was just moving upon his heart. In the name of Jesus, Lord, divine visitation uh, and, and, and divine interruptions, oh God, that will cause his soul to look up, that will cause him to look up in a fresh, new, and a living way. Have your way, Father. Have your way. We thank you that angels are on assignment in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank Good to see you again, sis. Yeah, bless you. Oh,